Here we want to look at predicates. So we've run into propositions in the past and we know that they're either true or false. But often when we look at logical expressions, they involve variables. This brings us to predicates that are extensions of propositions. So a predicate is a logical statement that may be true or false depending on the values of its variables. Predicates could contain variables. And if they do, the predicates can be thought of as Boolean valued functions that take inputs for the variables and then you could evaluate the logical statement as either true or false. Once you input the variables, it's not both, it has to be either true or false. So, if a predicate is always true, no matter what values of its variables, it's known as a tautology. If it's always false, it's called a contradiction. If it's sometimes false and sometimes true, it's known as a contingency. Most of the time we're going to be dealing with contingencies, but often what we'd like to do is to show that something is a tautology, always true. Now, predicates could be constants, as in um, there may not be, they may not have variables involved. True and false are predicates. Propositions are also predicates. Algebraic expressions, though, that evaluate to true or false depending on the inputted variables are predicates. And actually, predicates connected with Boolean operators are also predicates. So, for example, if expression 1 and expression 2 are predicates, then if we connect them using conjunction, the result is going to be a predicate. Using disjunction, the result will be a predicate. Connecting through implication will yield another predicate. And equivalence, so E1 is equivalent to E2, is also a predicate. In fact, any expression generated by a finite number of applications of connecting predicates through Boolean operators is also going to be a predicate. So for example, if we have E1 and E2 is equivalent to E2 and E1, where E1 and E2 are predicates, the result here is also going to be a predicate. So let's look at a couple example of examples of writing English in symbolic form, English statements in symbolic form that where we're um, looking at predicates. And then I'm going to ask you to do several exercises connecting the symbolic forms and the English statements. So if we think of x is positive, we could write that as x is greater than 0. And we can actually attach a letter to it like p for a predicate because it will be a predicate and will be true or false depending on what x is. Same thing, y is positive, we could describe as the predicate q. If we want to look at x is positive and y is positive, we could write it as x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0. Or we could say p and q, where p is x is positive and q is y is positive. Let's look at one more. X is positive or Y is positive. It's also going to be a predicate. We can write it as X is greater than 0 or Y is greater than 0. But if we think X is greater than 0 is predicate P and Y is 
greater than zero, we'll, we could call it predicate Q. We could write this as P or Q. And again, writing predicates in symbolic form can be challenging, but we're going to ask you to um, get used to it by practicing some of the uh, problems in the next piece.